Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how to create the popular 80s retro graphic in Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to teach you how to make everything from scratch from the text to the grid and all the colors and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. First thing I'm going to do is create the text. For the text, you want a blocky font, so I'm using Kaluna. Um, you can use anything really. And for the subtext, if you want subtext, you want to use something cursive. And I'm going to show you guys um, what I'm going to use for that. But first, we're going to go to blending mode. So you want to right click and press blending modes. And we're going to get like the colors right, um, the sort of style right. So we go to gradient overlay. I already have a set. But uh, basically, you want the angle for the gradient to be 90 or negative 90. It doesn't really matter. The main thing, however, when it comes to colors is you want it to be like purple uh, and bluish. That's sort of the theme you want to go with. Or you can choose like yellow and orange. Um, so just choose if you want cool colors or warm colors. I think um, with the 80s look, it looks better with the cooler colors. And one thing also is you want white in the middle and you want it to be very harsh. So to do this, you have around four or five colors. Um, I would choose one of these presets first. I think this one, like something like this has four colors already. So basically what you do, you're gonna move the middle ones close together and you're gonna make one of them white. And now you wanna make one of the sides like purple or blue, let's make this blue. And we're gonna make this side purple. In this side like pinkish so as long as the white is in the middle and the two colors are next to each other um, that's how you really create the effect it's like a, a sharp uh, look and you can even add another color to the end and make it like white but make it a little bit more subtle something like this but I'm gonna stick with my original um, I think this is probably the best color combination for me. And then the next big thing comes with bevel it emboss. Like I said before, it's gonna look sharp, right? So the first thing you wanna do is set the technique as uh, chisel hard. And then you wanna change the gloss contour to the third um, preset. So it's gonna look weird right now. So you just lower the shadow mode opacity and you increase the opacity for the highlight mode. And now if you increase the depth, the sharpness comes in. So you can do it to the full, um, that's an option. And so basically that's about it for the text. You can add an outer glow as well. Um, so I would choose like a purplish pinkish, depends on what color, obviously. I think purplish looks better. Something like that, very, very subtle. So there we go for like the main text. And for the subtext, you wanna use something cursive. So I'm gonna use Streamster. This one's free as well. And we're gonna just type in van. For this one, you want the opposite. You want something softer. Um, so when it comes to the blending mode, you don't want the chiseled sides and stuff like that. So if we right click and go to blending mode, we're going to want the outer glow because it's going to make it look a little bit softer. And then for this, you don't want this abrupt um, gradient. You might want something like this. And you can even add like a stroke to the outside, like a border. So something that is closer to the color that is the text. So something like that. I might even make this like a little bit more pink. I don't really like this purple color. So there we go for that. So now that we're done the text, we wanna just center everything. So you can um, select both of these and then press control A and then align it vertically and horizontally. So I'm gonna group this so I can align it uh, horizontally. And one thing with um, the main text, what you can also do is add a satin it might make it a little bit more aggressive. You want um, the black to be set at overlay. That's what's gonna give that effect. But it's totally up to you. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a grid. And I'm gonna teach you how to add the mountains and stuff like that. We're almost done. Um, so to add the grid, you wanna make a new uh, document and you wanna set it to like a small, small width and height. So something like this, like 500 or 300, just something that is much smaller than your current um, project. So let's actually make it like 400 and you want the background to be transparent. So I'm gonna delete the background right here. And now we're gonna make a square with no fill, just a, just a border basically. So we wanna press on the rectangle tool, 
make the fill transparent and make the stroke like white. And now we just want to click on the canvas and we want to set the width and height as whatever our canvas size was. And then we want to move it to the middle. I'm not sure if you can see the actual white. We can make it black so you can see it. I'm going to change it back to white. And basically uh, we're going to create a pattern out of this. So uh, once you're done creating this small stroke, we can go to define pattern and create a grid. And basically now all you want to do is make a new layer, go to edit, fill, go to pattern and select that pattern. So it should be the last one. And then there we go. As you can see is kind of big. So what we want to do actually is go to image, image size and set it way smaller, like a hundred. And I'll make this um, square smaller basically. And we want to make the stroke a little smaller. And we're going to do that again. And we're going to keep trying until we get the right size grid. So edit, fill and select the last one. Hopefully this one works. So this works a little bit better. And now what we want to do is we want to just move this grid a little bit down. So I'm going to press control T and move it down. And now we want to kind of warp it so that it looks 3D sort of. Um, obviously it's 2D, but you want to warp it, um, change its perspective. So what you do is you want to go to edit, transform and perspective. And we want to go to the bottom left and sort of drag it. So it's going to, it's kind of hard. Um, let me try this again. You want to drag it left and down at the same time so that it kind of goes out like this. And there we go. Now it's a little bit too high. Let's move it a little bit down. And now we want to create the mountains. So creating the mountains is probably the hardest part of this whole thing. You want to go to edit and go to pop it warp. And all these points are going to sort of come up. We actually want more of them. So we want to add more points. So we have like more flexibility and you want to set pins. So these are the parts that won't move. So you just want to set it sort of everywhere because we're really just touching the top, right? That's where the mountains are going to come in. So I would just set pins sort of in the middle where there's structure. And if you hover over um, the pins, it actually changes. Like the plus sign is gone. The plus sign appears when you want to add a pin. But if you want to move one, you, you just hover over it. So you can see here, we can create a mountain, but it doesn't look that good because this part is sort of like curving. So what we can do is we can add a pin right there and move it down again. So you just want to add pins and you want to add them in the middle so that nothing moves. So let's just say I want to add a mountain here. You don't want anything close to the text really, or else you won't be able to see the text. So there we go. It's very, very subtle. And then now we can right click and go to blending options and add a little color. So you can go to color overlay and change the color of the grid and then add a glow to it. So there we have this. And now the last thing to do is just add the finishing touches. So what we can do is we can add color sort of at the horizon line. So I would choose a, a brighter color. So like a very light pink and we want to go to our brush and set it as zero hardness. And we sort of just want to hold shift and drag right so that it, it creates a straight line and then lower the opacity by a lot. And then we just want to add it at the horizon line. And then now we're going to do some color grading. So increasing the contrast will kind of unify everything. And then changing the color balance is probably going to do a lot. So you can adjust the blues and stuff. And if you want to make it a little bit more realistic, you can erase sort of like the grid. So like some parts like this or like at the back where, where it fades and then even add lighting so we can add like a white at the very top. And yeah, that's about it. If you guys want to create the sun, it's probably the easiest. Um, so I'm just going to go into this. So I'm going to make the background black here. All you want to do is go to the circle um, ellipse tool and you want to hold shift and drag to make a circle. And let's make the fill white. Now you want to right click on the circle and rasterize the layer. And now you want to select on the marquee tool and just cut random spots and make sure it's like different size or like rectangles. So there we have it. And then we can right click and go to gradient and we can use the same gradient. 
So if I just move this here, it might be really, really small actually. We can move there and we can make the text smaller. I personally don't like the sun. I would either have the text there or the sun there, it's up to you. Um, but the option's there if you want it. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If it did, hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.